Okay, so I'm Uri Asher. I was a professor in computer science until six years ago when I finally retired. And uh, we have been traveling before that time and after. Uh, my wife, Nurit Bakanasher, is next to me here. Uh, she took all the pictures you're going to see, and I'm doing the talking. So, whoops. There. Uh, this uh, trip uh, started with a conference. I had uh, somehow found myself uh, being involved in a conference in Singapore in July. And uh, the question arose, uh, does it make sense to travel 16 hours in each direction, just flight time uh, for a conference of four days or something? So, so we decided uh, to add to that conference a trip in Bali in order to sort of make it uh, three weeks. And then uh, the flight time became, looked more reasonable in perspective. <clears throat> uh, then we found out also that uh, it was a high season in Bali. We didn't know that before. And that's because it is like midterm break. It's, a, it's, it's a, the winter break that we have uh, here, especially in Europe, actually, they have a long winter break. Uh, in Australia, is is in July. And, uh, and Australians consider Bali to be the backyard, basically. So quite a few people show up. And we try to avoid the most of the flow of the of tourists and concentrate on the place instead. <clears throat> so uh, what we did was to uh, uh, not go to southern Bali, which is where most uh, young tourists go. Uh, and uh, we've been there before. I should say that we've been in Bali in almost all of these places except for Mundok and Novino. Tobina before, uh, but not recently, 20 years ago or some 12 years ago. Uh, and so here is the itinerary that we have on a Google map. Uh, we started with, so the, the, the place we avoided is here. And we started with in Ubud uh, and it went up north to Munduk. Uh, and then to uh, Dovina Beach in the northern, uh, northern Bali. Uh, then uh, all the way to uh, to to uh, Ahmed Beach, spent a few days there too. Then we went to Sanur, and from Sanur we took a ferry to this little island here called Lembongan, and the even smaller one called Senningen. We spent four days there. So uh, let's start with Ubud. Ubud uh, is, is really the center of Balinese tradition and art. That's where it is best. Uh, ba ba Balinese people seem to be always uh, carving carving and, and, and making art. Uh, but in Ubud, it is kind of the, the, the peak of that. Uh, the Balinese people are uh, uh, have a, tra a religion which is a bra uh, brand of uh, Hinduism, uh, whereas most of uh, Indonesian population is Muslim. Uh, and uh, so, so it's kind of unique. And, and their uh, religion emphasizes the harmony of human and nature uh, through deities, through uh, uh, yeah, uh, spirits, through spirits. Uh, they, are, they have temples. Uh, and and uh, statues. So this statue on the left uh, picture is on the street where we where, where, where our bed and breakfast place was, uh, and there are many others uh, on the right. So they 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 have uh, uh, temples. Uh, each family really has a temple, uh, and uh, there are also small temples for the community uh, to gather in for a variety of occasions. Uh, so this is on the picture on the right. And you can see Ganesh, the, the elephant god, the Hindu elephant god in there. Uh, and, and the locals have uh, customs that they uh, observe that do not involve tourism. So this, for example, in that particular uh, temple, it's only about 200 meters from the, uh, from the royal palace, which is a major tourist point. Uh, but this, this uh, ceremony here is completely local. There are no tourists there. Uh, and they, they they try to live their traditional life as much as possible, 
with uh, with uh, in in circumstances that that where lots of people sort of uh, want to come to Ubud. <clears throat> in Ubud, uh, there's a main street called uh, the artery, the main artery called the Raya Street. In just south of it, there is a town center, markets, bars, and restaurants, and that used to be a nice place uh, last time we were there, about twelve or twenty years ago, I forget. No, twelve years ago. Uh, but uh, nowadays, it's, it was actually loaded with 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 uh, tourists, and that gave the place a different. It's, it's not that it was impossible to walk, but uh, the, the kind of the some of the spirit of the place this changed with with such a change. Um, we were there once, and then concentrated elsewhere. We went to two museums, uh, Agung Rai and, and Neka. We avoided the main uh, two uh, point of interest for tourists, which are in X here on this slide, simply because we've been there before and concentrated on the things below instead. So the, the here's a picture from one of the museums. I think it was the Gung Rai. No, that's Neka. No, that, that's Neka, sorry. <laughs> and uh, and so again, it it it, it represents this the, the the way they uh, they are looking at the so this is kind of a whole uh, holistic view, if you wish. Uh, so the, the the art is inside those the pavilions, but it's not one big building, small ones, and uh, they, they with 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 greenery, with uh, this, with with the harmony with nature. This is important topic. Mm -hmm. There was no one there. Well, actually, there were exactly two people other than ourselves there. Uh, and the other museum, likewise, just two people. You wouldn't think that this was uh, a high season at all if you went to the museums. But the, but the art is amazing. That's, but, the, that's the strange yeah, thing. Right? Yeah, but nonetheless, these muse museums are really, both of them are recommended. This is also from one of these museums in a uh, little pool with a very colorful fish. And and so now uh, here is here's a place that that is not well known and it's not really on the tourist map, but it's very close to the heart of uh, Ubud. I mean, it's only two kilometers or something like that, from, uh, and you just walk walk there uh, to the north in the northwest direction. Uh, there's a little hill to climb, but uh, then you get to an area which is very uh, quiet and kind of uh, you know nothing move fast. Uh, simply because I think uh, cars cannot go there. Uh, it's only for uh, pedestrians and uh, scooters. You can get there only that way. Uh, and and uh, so this is uh, uh, this is a pool you see here uh, where rice grows. The rice uh, grows. The, it is not in a final stage here. It is still going to be it's going to be much more green in that pool. Okay, uh, ducks love it. There were quite a few ducks there, and they were quite happy that the rice is not there yet. Uh, here's another picture of a house of uh, one of a farmer, I guess, uh, in the street kind of the end of the of the rice field, uh, covered with uh, vegetation, very very colorful and very uh, yeah large as you can see. Uh, th this place, uh, yeah. Uh, let me talk about two other places. If you go back to the main road, uh, Raya, and then turn uh, south, uh, you get to uh, to a street, uh, and, and uh, about fifty meters later, uh, there is a restaurant called uh, 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 the Cafe de des Artistes. The reason why I'm mentioning that is that you can Google that and see where the street is. Uh, it's actually a, a, one of the best restaurant we know in in uh, Ubud. A uh, uh, fusion of uh, of uh, local uh, Indonesian food and uh, Western food, quite good. If you continue to go uh, along that street, there's this neighborhood which is relatively uh, newly developed. Uh, and uh, at, at in there, uh, it's it's kind of just a nice street. It's not as crowded and con and, and, and and dense as in other, some other places in uh, in, Bali, in uh, Ubud. Uh, this rice field is actually uh, 
it, it is it seems to belong to one of the fanciest hotels uh, in there. Uh, and I think it must be the hotel that is maintaining it so nice as in this picture. Uh, and there are other places, some of the hotels there are fancy and others are uh, less fancy, uh, you know, all the way to backpackers. Uh, but the whole place is sort of nice. There are, there are quite a few foreigners that that arrive at uh, uh, Ubud and forget to leave. And, and many of them concentrate in that area. What uh, where we spent time as well is another street called Sueta, which is north of the main intersection of uh, where tourists roam. Uh, and this street is along a deep gorge. Uh, and and um, there's this uh, um, uh, person called Ketut, uh, and he has two places, Ketut Place and Ketut Villas, uh, along the same street. We stayed in the villas this time. And uh, he is very much into that that uh, uh, Balinese tradition, maintaining Balinese tradition with tourism by having these places which which combine uh, uh, Balinese tradition elements in inside his hotel. You know? So it's 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 really a bunch of cottages, villas, he calls them, uh, and this is the swimming pool. Uh, you can see again very colorful sort of. Uh, uh, Plants around it with with uh, the statue that sort of uh, 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 the, the water you know that that, that feeds as, as if it feeds the 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 pool and this is uh, to, towards the gorge this is the wall of the pool if you wish a kind of uh, it's rather impressive in fact in in, in real in real time. On the other side of that uh, play, of that uh, bed and breakfast, when you get to the road, uh, there's of course the decoration on this wall. There's no wall without decoration there. Uh, and you can see these two scooters. Um, quite a few people uh, rent a scooter there. You can actually rent a scooter, also a scooter with a driver. Uh, but renting a scooter, uh, as a matter of fact, these this vehicles uh, are, are very easy to drive, to ride. Uh, it's like a, like a, like an e-bike, if you wish, with a fat tire. Uh, but it's not recommended to do it if you haven't done it before, because the traffic in Ubud uh, obeys different uh, sort of signals than what we are used to here. But it does allow you to get to places that you couldn't otherwise. That's why. That's it right. Works. But it really it sort of allows you to do more things and and be less calculated when you go around. Yeah. Uh, 12 years ago, we stayed in uh, Ketut's place, the other place of the same Ketut. Uh, and that was also where the family, it's kind of a family plus bed and breakfast uh, that they have. And they have, uh, and they had a, 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 a feast there, uh, again, with some sort of uh, uh, historical, uh, not historical, but rather, uh, I don't want to say religious, traditional, traditional uh, Emphasis. So these people showed up with their ceremonious clothes and uh, had a feast, and uh, and uh, we were allowed to uh, sort of mingle with them because we were guests in the place. And uh, this is the temple of the family, Ketut, okay, right on the premises of that 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 family that that uh, family dwelling plus plus uh, bed and breakfast place. It's quite elaborate. Four days later, we moved on to uh, Mundok. Mundok. That means north, north of uh, of uh, uh, of the wood, and uh, Mundok is a place that is uh, very small and, and nestled along a steep mountain range, mountain side, and is kind of higher up uh, and in the hills, and so uh, it is relatively cooler. Okay, uh, very quiet. And the thing to do there is uh, to have walks around and verdant hills and uh, small waterfalls and it's, it's, it's very peaceful and there's nice view all the way to the beach of the north. Uh, we stayed in a place called Puri Lumbing. There are two big ones and this is where almost all uh, tourist visitors stay. Uh, they have cottages. Uh, our cottages look, cottage looked like uh, the upper part here 
this is how our cottage looked like without the door part, okay? kind of in the forest. And this is the view from our porch uh, in a, on a misty day. And so, uh, yeah, we did what everybody does. Uh, we went for walks there and uh, you walk and you hear the water all the time. Uh, and it's, it's actually very peaceful with a small waterfall in this case. And uh, during this walk, we stumble upon this uh, temple uh, that actually, uh, we are not even sure what it is uh, used for because it is large, uh, relatively speaking, and uh, only very few people, locals, uh, living around it. Uh, however, it is being used, obviously, it has all these uh, umbrellas that certainly are not there for many years, yeah. It was very, it was very uh, nice and peaceful. The the people, the 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 guests there were were different from others that we've seen along this trip. Uh, they seemed to be Europeans or Americans or Canadians. Uh, there was a group of women there of uh, of uh, an age uh, slightly younger than us, but not that much younger, and uh, and so on. I mean, everybody was kind of doing walks, forest walks. This is me preparing for my conference uh, on the porch of that uh, uh, over there in, in, in Munduk. Two days later, we went up north to the Lovina, Lovina Beach. Uh, Lovina Beach is, uh, is next to a bigger town, uh, but the town of about two hundred of a hundred thousand people is not interesting. It's Lovina Beach which is interesting. Uh, it faces northwest, so it has nice uh, sunsets. Uh, and uh, it was uh, new to us. Uh, we loved it. Uh, we stayed in this bed and breakfast that had this view. Uh, it's on the hill and has this kind of commanding view of the stuff below. And uh, it's an little pool. And uh, then towards uh, evening, before evening, we would go down there to uh, watch sunsets. So here are examples from near- The boats, you wanted to talk about these boats. Yes, I, I will. Mm -hmm. So uh, here on the left is uh, a, a, a fishing boat and, and the fishermen are, are taking out the, uh, a big uh, net where they're going to try to catch fish. On the right, uh, it's the same kind of boat, and you can see that it has these stabilizers. I don't know if you've seen things like that before. Uh, and that allows the boat to get all the way to the shore without a dock. Okay. That makes it look like an insect as well. Okay. And then now towards sunset, uh, sunset time, uh, the same fishermen are holding the net uh, underneath the water and soon they're going to pull it in and uh, get the catch of the day. To the right, a girl running around at yeah, yeah, the same time, more or less. These two girls have uh, somehow were somehow connected to the fishermen. They were waiting for them to finish their work and come back home with them. There was a... Uh, a bar nearby, really nearby. It was about twenty or thirty meters away from the from the water, uh, and then that was a nice surprise. It's called Funky Bar, and you have these uh, bean bags. They are colorful bean bags. You sit on bean bags, uh, and it has surprisingly good drinks and food for a bar in the sand, uh, and it has also uh, again around sunset time. Sunset is that time there. Uh, and uh, there is this, it's called gamla, uh, this traditional music that these people are playing. We took, one day we took a car and, 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 uh, and driver uh, on a day, uh, on a tour for the day. And uh, I'm going to discuss, to describe two places that we've been to. This one is a temple, uh, the, the nicest temple in this neighbor, in this entire area, apparently. Uh, and again, we were, we were shocked to see that we are the only ones there, the only tourist in the high season. Uh, the, the grass mower and the lady. Yeah, but uh, the grass mower and the lady are, are, not, are not tourists. 
And <laughs> so, so you go in and uh, there are statues everywhere. Uh, and and the thing here is this thing here, okay, in, uh, in focus. And this lady has just laid uh, um, what's the word? offers offers for this offering for this for the spirits. Okay. And uh, here she is praying, the same one on the left, uh, praying uh, the offering. So it's. Uh, uh, in the middle here is a, a, a one of the statues which are part of the structure, of the big structure. Uh, and on the right, there is a, a, a standalone uh, uh, statue of a, a, a flutist, and uh, it has been dressed with a traditional clothes, you can see, ceremonial clothes. It is mainly for their own use, uh, this temple, not for tourists. Behind the main structure, there is this ceremonial pool uh, with, with uh, again, this statue of uh, the woman uh, uh, and the water into the, into the pool. And, uh, uh, you know, it has this, uh, it's, it's, not for, it's not for swimming. It's a ceremonial pool. Uh, it's actually a very serene and a very beautiful uh, area, very peaceful area. Yes, yes. That was one thing that we saw. The other one was uh, these waterfalls. There, the, there is a third one that is that didn't make it to the into the picture. Um, it is a few, a few, you know, maybe twenty or thirty kilometers away from there, from the previous one. Um, I should have said uh, before that that uh, the trip, you know, the Google map of the trip, you know, was sort of circular. It's more than semi-circular kind of route in the north uh, east of Bali. And what does it circle? It circles in mountainous areas, and especially uh, the main mount, which is called Mount Agung, which is a um, uh, um, uh, a, a volcano. And uh, last time it erupted was in 2019. And uh, and that is responsible uh, both for the very fertile uh, lava soil uh, and also for the fact that the beaches, both in Lovina and in Ahmed, which is coming, are uh, black black uh, sand beaches, not white sand, not white sand as in the south of uh, Bali. Uh, to get here, uh, you park the car, and then there is a guide that is assigned to you, uh, a special guide from the locals, that's how they make their living, and uh, there's a kilometer and a half of nature walk with interpretation of the, the various trees and plants, and, and, and actually very nice and interesting. And then you get to this uh, area where, where, you know, where, where pictures are taken from. Uh, it is possible to go down there to the bottom of those uh, of those uh, waterfalls, uh, but it is it is a serious walk down both down and up. Actually, you basically, go from one rock to another. I think it was three hundred of them steps or something of that. Three three hundred and fifty steps. Yeah, steps. So it's yeah, but I I did it. It's possible to do. Uh, there we did meet people, young people uh, having fun. You know. In the waterfall and the pool there and so on. It was very nice. It was really very nice and impressive. Very impressive. Uh, these these I forget how tall they are, but they are really tall. Were tall waterfalls. So three days later, uh, we went to the next spot uh, in Ahmed Beach. Uh, Amin Beach, unlike the other places, uh, is more tourist uh, than before, significantly more. Uh, we were there about 20 years ago, and the only thing worth seeing then was uh, Tulambeng, the same item, the second item here in the in the slide. Uh, there's a sunken, sunken cargo ship there. Uh, it was sunk in, in the Second World War. Uh, it was a cargo ship of the Allies and a Japanese uh, 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 submarine uh, sent a torpedo uh, to it and, and broke it into two. And the ship sank there. 
and the and the coast there is very steep underneath the water uh, and so the ship was about 50 meters away from the beach but it sank it was almost 40 meters so the top of the ship sunken ship is about 25 meters below sea uh, below sea level so uh, you have uh, you have this uh, fairly unique experience that you put if you dive uh, that you put your uh, diving equipment on you and on the beach and walk into the water as opposed to go to the boat, uh, going to the boat and uh, basically start swimming and 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 uh, diving and there you are, and it's a nice, really pretty view from twenty years ago. Uh, then that because because uh, the corals uh, corals uh, cover this uh, sunken ship and uh, little fish uh, very colorful. And very interesting how the colonies of the coral uh, use the the body of the of the ship. So uh, that was then. We were five people then. Now there are lineups to get there. You can just go there. You actually have to register, and there are lineups to go there, and so on. It became a major touristic spot. The entire area. There are shops. Uh, where you can not only rent equipment, but you can take courses and not only diving, but also uh, snorkeling. And uh, there are boats going there and f there and back. Uh, but 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 frankly, it's not entirely clear. Uh, wasn't entirely clear where is the where is the beef in that area? It's it's nice, but but uh, but. Um, I think that this this uh, cargo ship is still the main attraction around there. Uh, so we spent one day sitting by the pool uh, in our bed and breakfast. We had a Balinese massage. Uh, we fixed our nails and so on. In the evening, we went to the next beach, uh, and uh, there was a restaurant there, a good restaurant. And so we had uh, you know we had our dinner there. It was nice and very relaxed. Then uh, uh, on another day there, we you went. See that the 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 reason it's not so popular is because the sand is black, and you can see that that it's right. different than normal. And that's right. What people really look for in Bali. Right. Was that clear? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so this black sand, yeah, from the volcano, uh, yeah, is is somehow makes it less popular. Anyway, so what we did the next day was to uh, hire another car and driver. Uh, and this time the driver was actually the husband of the receptionist in the hotel. And uh, he took us to uh, Sidemen. Sidemen is an area up in the hills uh, close to, uh, to Mount Agung. In fact, uh, people who want to climb Mount Agung often go to Sidemen and start their climb from there. Uh, Mount Agug, unfortunately, is usually covered with clouds, but so you have to be careful about when you go there. Uh, but uh, you know, it's one thing to do. But the thing that we liked there is all these rice fields that were there. It's actually a prime place for seeing rice rice fields in the, in the hills, in the in hills and valleys among the nestled among the hills. Very pretty sites in different places. Uh, here's another picture of uh, rice fields. This time you can see really the rice coming out of the of the poles. Okay, different stage. Uh, here's another one where it's kind of more rectangular, but the same thing and climbing up the hill. And here's a third where you can see different pools at different stage of the life of the rice. It's very nice place. Very, very highly recommended. It's funny that once you start walk, uh, going up uh, in to, towards these hills and stay there, suddenly the traditional way of life comes back, which is not quite there in Ahmed. Uh, tourism took over there. But in those hills, uh, once again, we saw the temples and once again, there were ceremonies. Somebody died and somebody got married and, and there were ceremonies for each of those and so on, traditional clothes and everything. So uh, then we continued south uh, once again with, with a ride and uh, all the way to a place called Sanur that there's nothing to recommend except that this is where you take a ferry from to a small island called Lembongan Island. Uh, 
And Bongan Island, we have a special relationship with. Uh, we were there four, uh, three times in 2004, 2012, and 2024. And each time it looked completely different. Um, it's it's uh, in 2004 there was nothing there was there was I think that there were must have been about ten tourists of whom two were us, and then the rest of them were surfers. Uh, in 2012 there was already quite a bit more development and there were kind of more recent places to stay. In 2004 we couldn't get a drink. 2012 there was no problem in that. Uh, it was really kind of a good balance of sun tourism and so on and uh, you know snorkeling and diving around. And so on, and uh, uh, but also traditional life uh, in yes. Bongan were still there. Uh, this time in 2024, it was of course highlighted more, but because of this was uh, the, the high season. But uh, suddenly, Lembongan was covered with tourists, and it was not just the tourists uh, as people, but also that uh, almost everywhere there was another hotel, another bar, another restaurant, and uh, and very little left from. Uh, from from the traditional place that it was it once was only twenty years ago. Okay, we were fortunately enough to stay in uh, the next little island called Senningen, and it is less touristed yet. Uh, yet, and that's for one reason because from Lembongen to get there, there is this yellow bridge, which is called the Yellow Bridge, uh, and it is you cannot go by car there. You cannot you can go only by motorbike or uh, or walk, and uh, and so that sort of slowed down again a little bit. Okay, now, what do we have there? So this is this is actually Limbongan. So you can have waves. You can see waves, and and this wave is hitting the the the, the coast here, uh, generating artificial pools and and waterfalls that disappear in a few like less than one minute uh, until the next wave comes and generate the whole action again. Uh, and then in between uh, uh, the two islands of Limbongan and Senegan, a bit more into the sea, there are those big waves and those waves are surfer type waves. They are kind of long sort of waves uh, and they kind of uniform in that sense. Um, and there's another picture with a surfer trying to catch. This is not a, a place uh, where you want to go for a simple swim. <laughs> you have to you be an expert. <laughs> you have to be you have to be an expert to actually be in that water. But it's fun to watch. You know? It's another picture of uh, somebody trying to catch trying to catch the wave. Those those surfers, by the way, are, are sophisticated. They have an app and they have the app can tell them uh, a, a few days in advance that there's going to be waves. Uh, and that's because those waves are uh, traveling a good part of the uh, of the Pacific Ocean, uh, and so it is possible to predict when there will be waves and when there won't be waves a few days in advance. And it helps, of course, in when you book places to stay, and so on. So, so uh, these so this is from Senegal. Yeah, this is from Senegal. Uh, this uh, these waves like, get stopped. Uh, on a reef, okay, in between those two little islands. And then on the other side, uh, there is very flat and quiet waters. Okay, And there, they actually grow seaweeds. People grow seaweeds there. Uh, the only thing which is not related to tourism, it seems. Cultivate, Cultivate uh, seaweeds. Um, so, so to see this kind of picture, uh, you have to come uh, when they come over when there's light, but 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 uh, the tide is low. You know, only low tide they come to work on this on these fields under the water. And uh, this is uh, this woman is bringing uh, seaweed to the to the shore where they're going. It's going to be collected, and eventually it makes it to uh, Japan, where they make uh, cosmetics products out of the seaweed. So it's kind of a long, a bit, a kind of a wider angle uh, picture. Uh, and so you can see uh, this, this red house over there. This is in Limbongan, okay? Uh, and it's a hotel, it's a new hotel in Limbongan. But this is in Senegal. Uh, but the, the picture is taken from Senegal, from, from Senegal, from the smaller island. Okay. And now, 
Mm. It's interesting to note this this uh, sea, seaweed production is when we were there in 2004, that was the main industry of the island. And so there were like a lot of beaches that were just for that, but that's all gone. Like this is the only beach now that is left because everybody else wants to do tourism. So they're losing their traditional way of life. The young people don't no longer want to do that. Yeah, it's hard to walk and uh, work and pays less than tourism. So we probably not going to see it very much anymore. Yeah. So so I was talking about these big waves, and here it is. This is where they get, they get stopped. And now a picture to the other direction from the same place. Here There's the go. yellow bridge. Doesn't look yellow, but believe me, it's yellow. <laughs> Uh, but it's a picture against 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 the sun, yeah. and you see you can see the the seaweed being accumulated here, yeah. collected here, as you say. Mm -hmm. So we stayed up on the hill there, and uh, next door uh, there was a place that was just for day use, but a very nice one. Uh, some very comfortable seats uh, near uh, this infinity pool that is in the bottom of this picture. And it has this gorgeous view of uh, Sinigan to the left, then Bongan to the right, those waves that I talked about over here, and Bali in the background. So this is the Bali and the, the island, you know, the main island. And uh, and at, at uh, sunset time, as this picture was taken, uh, it's, you know, it has wonderful views, really. Uh, and good food. Actually, it has good, a good, very good restaurant on top of everything. Yeah, so we 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 went there about two or three times. Mm -hmm. uh, and then one time, there it is, Mount Ugum, without clouds. Believe me, it's hard to find this mountain without a cover, cloud cover. Uh, you can see that in fact it is a, it is a uh, volcano. It's kind of broken up at the top. So uh, came the day when we had to leave, and so there was a little truck we took to the Yellow Bridge. Then we crossed the Yellow Bridge on foot with our trolleys, and then another yellow, another little truck to the ferry, took the ferry, then car to the airport, then we flew to Singapore, then we went to the, found, found the hotel, and we ended up on the 17th floor of a high rise, which was our hotel. There's quite a, a bit of a difference in one day to cover all of this. Um, in uh, Singapore, we, the, the only thing which is similar between Singapore and, and Bali is our own perception that we've been there also about 20 years ago. So how did Singapore change? Otherwise, everything is different. Singapore is rich, as I'm, I'm sure that many people know, uh, a, a rich country. And uh, it's not well. It's an island. It's a, it's a it's a city state, really. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it serves as the uh, uh, financial hub of a huge area. And this is where the richness comes from. Uh, it is very uh, carefully managed, shall we say. Uh, the the government there is a benevolent dictatorship. Really, it tells people what to do. You can't have a car there, uh, you know, unless there's another car which dies. You know, they keep control, tight control of a number of cars, uh, and and you don't own, own the land of your house and things like that. Uh, but they've done a, a, a tremendously good job, really, in, in making sure that everywhere you go, there are some green areas. They have uh, two huge. Uh, 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 Botanical gardens. They've um, the roads uh, there are in fact easier to go through uh, than in Vancouver. Much easier. Uh, you don't have this uh, traffic jams that you have in downtown Vancouver. Uh, and 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 then there is uh, an excellent uh, public transportation, both uh, tram and and buses. And also they have uh, they, they have a tight control over taxis. There are a lot of taxis you can take and they're, they're much cheaper than here and, uh, and, and it's easy to take and, and uh, it's just a, a no problem experience each time, every time. Yeah. Uh, Singapore is full of uh, high rises. 
this is the commercial center uh, and you have these people uh, who are working in one of those high rises so taking a, 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 a break in this green area uh, and they're sitting on, on, on the swings, in fact, so that they move, bodies will move a little bit uh, while they're taking this lunch break. Yeah. About a kilometer away from there is the, the Bay Area, and that is the picture-perfect picture place uh, in Singapore. Uh, all of this is relatively new. Uh, and this is now the signature of Singapore. Uh, this incredible structure here uh, was designed by uh, Safdi, the same uh, architect who designed the Vancouver Public Library. And uh, it is actually a hotel. It is a Sands Hotel. It's a five-star five hotel. Um, we were inside there because the conference dinner was somewhere here. Um, but I, I should say that um, the conference dinner was great. But, but it was up there when we went up there to see the view. Yeah, but the dinner was here somewhere. And yeah. five, I think it was five, fifth floor, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it looks... Inside, it looks really like your garden variety five star hotel. Yeah. Except, Very nice, good food, but except yeah. the view from the top. Yeah, but the view from the top is fantastic. It's unbelievable. This is on the left is the symbol of Singapore. Water. This is, I think, from our hotel. Yes, it is. Yeah, from our hotel. Uh, you know, which was on high rise and overlooking other other high rises. So, so you can see they they have greens here and here. You know, it is carefully planned, really, uh, not just many high rises. And here, there's an area to preserve uh, the history of the place. Uh, these are historical building, just two stories high. Uh, you have to you have great connections to be able to live there. Yeah. But but still. Uh, we went also to a particular area, which is also preserved and reconstructed a bit, uh, which is Chinatown. We have about we had about two days to to uh, do sightseeing, and I had two days to see to do sightseeing in Singapore. Um, uh, one of those days was because Air Canada flies only once every two days, so we had to stay another day there. Uh, so uh, so this is a, a obviously a Hindu temple, but it is in Chinatown. Uh, as I said, the government there is really a controlling type, and uh, this this sort of sign was on the wall of an open bar. Uh, and as you can see, they tell you a lot of things to do and mostly not to do. You know, uh, you are in really bad shape if you're actually disobeying the law there in, in uh, Singapore. Uh, but they've done a lot of uh, good work in many ways, nonetheless. Uh, this is a, a lot less signs like that than they used to be. That's right. That's right. Uh, this is a mural depicting the old times in Chinatown. In this is in Chinatown, but it's a mural. It's another. Uh, this is actually a place uh, for ice cream, uh, but they have a decor uh, of both wall and ceiling that matches the the table and the seats very well. It's not kind of clear right away what is what. And then we also bumped into this uh, uh, temple. It's a Buddhist temple in Chinatown. And uh, so in addition to this, uh, to this uh, statue, in, uh, the, entrance, the, the, the entrance that we took, uh, you can just go into the main uh, area, this kind of hall. Uh, and uh, the visitors, uh, the well-behaved visitors, uh, sort of go, go along the, the the walls of this place, and uh, do not interrupt too much the the monks that are sitting there chanting and reading. So that's uh, that's the end of the slides that I wanted to show you. Thank you very much, uh, Uri. Um, and I can't remember your wife's name, but thank you, both Sorry. of you. <laughs>
And could you uh, turn off your screen sharing and then we can chat. And there's one question that came while you were talking and that was, uh, did you have to worry about mosquitoes? No, no, uh, nowhere actually. When we, no. I think, no, no, we didn't. Nowhere in Bali are mosquitoes and all those jungles and forests and all through. No, no, I don't, we don't have any memory of mosquitoes. And and my memories from the past is the only place that had mosquitoes was in the monkey forest. Okay. <laughs> and maybe that's because there's so many tourists there. I don't know. We in, didn't go this time, as always said. In, but Ubu, no. in Ubu, there is in a place Ubu. called Monkey Forest. Actually, uh, it's a nice spot, but uh, very touristic. Yeah. yeah. But and, that's and, and it's one of those places that we've been to before, and yeah, yeah. And I don't know. We didn't encounter any mosquitoes this time. We did bring a uh, mosquito repellent with us because we always take it, but we didn't use it. We didn't even open it. Uh, Uri, could you uh, stop sharing, please? Sure. In the bottom here, you can stop no. sharing. Go out. Turn up. Just click that one. How do you hear? Right oh, here. Okay. Stop here. Yeah. All Thanks. right. Now, now we can uh, have everybody uh, see them again. Um, first of all, are there any uh, questions from anyone in the audience? Comments? Helen? I'd just like to compliment you both on the photographs, I think, or maybe it was your wife who took the photographs. They're really, they're really beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> drives the economy. What, what really causes uh, Where? Singapore. I, I have a question uh, um, for you. We were scheduled to go to Indonesia for three weeks uh, just before COVID arrived and canceled our trip. And then when we started to plan to go there again, one of the concerns we had is that they have very strict regulations about medications that you can bring in and needing the doctor's note for every medication that you had. And if you go onto the official website, it says that. Mm -hmm. And it says that even with a doctor's note, you can't bring any kind of narcotic medication. So a Tylenol number three or Tylenol number one would be unacceptable. Oh. I came with Tylenol, with a lot of Tylenol. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you broke the law. I, I think that they do have, they do have a very strict, uh, uh, they're trying to have a very strict control of drugs of any kind because they have a severe problem. They really do have a severe problem. But if, if a person looks like you or look like us, unless you're coming with a whole bunch of needles, uh, they won't bother with you. Okay. Yeah, the procedures of getting in and out were very simple. Yeah. yeah, for, yeah. Because uh, it was because of that and not being able to even bring Tylenol number one in no, you legally that we decided to cancel the whole trip. And we I did. don't think they actually mean well, that. I think that what they mean, Tylenol 3 is considered a drug. And it's not like there, it's here considered a drug yeah. too. Um, so, you know, like, I think that that's what they mean. And the regular, you know, extra strength Tylenol or extra strength Advil that, you know, that I take with me, um, I don't think it's a problem. I don't think they don't ask and they, you know, they can see, you know, through their x-ray, they can see if you have needles and then they'll ask questions. Right. Uh, but I don't worry about it that much. Okay. Uh, to Tony here. I uh, I just want to make a quick comment about uh, Singapore. I was uh, invited by the health ministry some 30 years ago and toured uh, one of their hospitals. And what impressed me the most was that 30 years ago, they already had robots roaming around carrying central supply stuff uh, to floors above. And if you happen to step in front of one of them, they'll say, excuse me, and they size up you. And 
then get onto the elevator and push the elevator and get on up. And so they were, I, I was very impressed, very advanced. Uh, all their health records were already digitalized. And uh, um, the other thing that was very interesting in Singapore's only place where, where we experience this is when you go into a restaurant, especially all you can eat restaurant in Singapore, make sure you only take what you eat because if you had left over in the plate, you had it in, they charge you money for that. They weigh it, <laughs> they weigh it and see what was left behind and they charge you money for that. That's the only place we <laughs> encounter that. But it, it does make sense that they do that. But really enjoy your uh, your talk and particularly about Bali, which I haven't been to. Thanks. The, the, the university that where my conference was held in, I mean, it's only the dinner that was in the in yeah. the in the Sands Hotel. Uh, that is the best university within. I don't know how many hundreds of miles radius. Yeah. Uh, so it's actually an excellent university. So it's not really surprising in that sense about the robots. I mean, that sort of fits the. They're really advanced. Yeah. yeah. I think that to me the most incredible. I mean, the most impressive thing about Singapore is the way they use control to benefit the people. Um, and Uli was mentioning this thing about traffic that is actually pleasant to, uh, to, to drive or to go from one place to another because of the public transportation that is clean and fast and available and everywhere and cheap. Uh, everybody talks about Singapore being so expensive, but it isn't on that level. So people really want to use it um, so yes, they can, you know, it costs a lot to buy a car, but it doesn't impede their movement. So that's really nice. And the other thing is that compared to 20 years ago, when Oli and I used to go a lot, uh, and they were poorer and smaller and all that kind of stuff. But the one thing they were always were, and they still are, is extremely friendly. And that is incredible when you go and everybody wants to help you and everyone wants to talk. And it's really nice. It's just really nice feeling to be there. Richard, you had your hand up. Yes, thank you. I thought I'd just mention that uh, if you wanted to go at this specific time of year, you maybe want to be aware there's a Formula One race on in Singapore, which means massive disruptions to the street system and so forth. <laughs> but the real question I had was, could you just comment on the climate? Perhaps I missed it. But is it uh, humid? Is it warm do you know if yeah. it varies very much from season to season the the uh, my okay so in, on singapore or bali actually the answers are almost similar um but in singapore uh, uh the only time that i've been to where it was actually nice to roam in the street uh, during the day in some sense uh was uh, around december january so that seems to be the cooler time there but it's not uh, cold, but cold. The, it, it's definitely not cold it's but still it's hot. Not, yeah uh it, it, the first the, the the in the early uh, 2020 you know in the in the early years of this century uh i had a, actually i had a chance uh, to to stay there for a term and teach a course in the university and i i turned it down because because i didn't feel like spending a term uh, a semester in uh, in, in uh, in, in, in Singapore, and I, and and one reason was this sort of uh, stifling sometimes weather. It's very muggy. Mm -hmm. so much muggy. Yeah. But it has improved. Uh, yeah, but right now there's even more more uh, space, which is air conditioned, of course. Yeah. Uh, and so it somehow was less bothersome this time, although it was a short stay that we stayed there. You can also just to follow up. I mean, is there a season when it rains every day for fine at five in the evening? No, no, okay, I thank you. I don't know. I have Bali, there are you know, there is in certain places, you know, that they would you have this torrential rain, but but they will go on for like 50, you know, like 15 minutes, half an hour. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Singapore, I don't recall that ever that it may be, but. They, when I said it improved, it's not the weather didn't improve, but because they have they have more money they, and everything is more air conditioned, then you can like when you go for a walk, which I did a lot, 
you can just go and zoom in and zoom out of malls that are everywhere. And you just kind of go in, you refresh yourself and you continue to go. In the old days, you couldn't do that. So you were walking, like I would walk for hours with my big camera and I was just like, it was like you were wet all the time. Because very, very, but it's okay. easier to do now. Ken, you have to unmute yourself, Ken. <laughs> Ken, and, uh, well done. I am. Okay, uh, your, your um, talk evokes uh, tales of the South Pacific and uh, Bally High, uh, that that particular musical. Do you find yourself walking around remembering the musical or singing the song? Is that? Uh... <laughs> I know, I know the the movie and the record, but no, no, we were, oh, okay. really we're trying to concentrate where where it was it made sense. On this, uh, what I mentioned, this harmony of man and nature—that was really the kind of the thing that uh, that we try to see if you know how much of that is still left. But sense. actually, Ken, the, the mountain that uh, was in the movie uh, South Pacific is in Mooria. In oh. <laughs> <laughs> a little artistic license there. <laughs> Well, well I, I don't know that it had anything to do with Bali, and I don't know what the word Bali High means. Ah. But right. it doesn't have anything to do with Indonesia. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was somewhere else in the, yeah, in the South Pacific. Pacific. Yeah. yeah, it was in, listed in Tahiti, in one of the islands. No, he's just uh, clapping, I think. Michael is just cheering. Uh, Uri, how, how did you travel around when you were in Bali? And how did you organize where you were staying? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> let, me answer the, let, let me answer the last one first, because it was, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's a saying in Eastern Europe that uh, the biggest potatoes grow at, in, the, in the fields of the dumbest uh, uh, um, Farmer. farmers. And I felt like that sometime because uh, because the way I found out that uh, that we are in high season is uh, when I was trying to use Booking.com to <laughs> to book some of those places and uh, found out it was not only more expensive than usual but also more scarce than usual, especially in Lembonga. Uh So well, in Ubud we go back to the same place that we've stayed yeah, in many times yeah. before. Yeah, so that's but it also the 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 the, the created place was also cool. right, but we knew that because we did it like we know this place in Ubud. We stayed with this family before, so we called them and they said that the place we always stayed in is full, but they have the new place, so that's when we went. Other than that, it was booking, and it's a lot of work, but it's but it worked. Yeah. Uh, but but that, but uh, let me answer the other question. Uh, how do you move from one place right. to another? That's very simple, in fact. So if in if you if you stay in a reasonable place, uh, then uh, you base, they will organize for you a, a car and driver. For, uh, so usually, even for the next day, we yeah. usually said it you know a little bit earlier than the next day, but almost the next day. And all the hotels would do that. Yeah, they would arrange it for you. Yeah. And and the good thing about it is it less it's less headache for you, but it also is very safe and reliable because your hotel would find the right people, the right driver, the right car. So you don't, you know, you don't run into some, you know, because if you don't speak the language, it's much easier that way. Inside Ubud, we had a motorbike. But um, the, the only challenging bit was uh um when we had to organize our return from this uh, syndicate to to the airport and make it on time <laughs> uh and uh, so this we organized through the owner of the place where we stayed and he used a travel uh, agent uh from sunward which is where you you switch from car to ferry the town uh the town yeah so, so these guys are connected, and uh, and the, you know it was arranged, and the arrangement worked. And they're used, and they're used to doing that for you. So it's yeah. it's it's fairly simple. Yeah. You just have to tell them this is what I want to do, and they'll and they'll get you the best deal. Yeah, 
So, so it was, uh, it was uh, actually, I was surprised at how easy it was this time. Laurent, you had your hand up. I beg your pardon? No, yes. Um, I was wondering, uh, we're planning to go to Bali and Singapore in next year, actually. So this was a fascinating uh, introduction to that. Um, but I'm wondering if you went anywhere else in Indonesia while you were there. This time. Not this time, yeah. And we've been to almost all the islands uh, yeah. in the past. We've traveled a lot in Indonesia. It's an amazing country. But, yeah. But besides <laughs> Bali, there is a lot of really neat islands. So in fact, uh, we were thinking of going instead of Bali, we were going to another island called Flores, Flores uh, which is next to Komodo, where they have this uh, 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 which lizards. Although the huge themselves yeah. are a bit of a, of an oh, you know it's a it's a downer <laughs> it's a downer but everything else is not a downer. Uh, Norris is yeah. very nice, but it's a difficult island to travel. We've yeah. been there before, and yeah. you need to go in the right time of the year because there it rains a lot. Yeah, and the reason why we didn't go there is once again because it was high season, and we we were not sure we we're going to catch the flights there and back, and so That's on. Right. Was, you have to have time. It to... looked too iffy, and so we yeah. said for. Okay. But the rest of it is there are other islands that are not. Flores is particularly difficult, but uh, but there is other there are other islands that are Modern. not so difficult. But you do need to have the time because some of these more remote islands. As, as always said, you can get there by flight, and then you don't know if your flight goes back at the same time. So you have to kind of have leeway. Bali, in that sense, is the most touristic, and because of that, it's easier. It's the easiest, yeah. Well, yeah. We're, we're actually going to fly to, uh, I don't know if the name of the island is Labuan. Or... Uh, Labuan. 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 Labuan is in Labuan Bajo. That yeah. is... In, that is in Flores. That's in Flores. Yeah. Oh, it is. Uh, oh, it is. Okay. So we're going to fly there, but we're on a tour. So we're going um, to the Komodo I, Dragon. Yes. Yeah. You're going to see the dragon. It's a bay, and uh, on one side, that's, that's where Flores ends. Yeah. I, and okay. uh, there is the island where you have these lizards, but, but this entire area is called Komodo as well. Yeah, okay. I see, we see uh, that. Yeah. It's yeah. a national yeah. park, I guess. Yeah. 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 What time of the year are you planning to be there? Uh, uh no it's latest? uh early no it'll be early september we're going to singapore first yeah so, so it'll be sort of a bird, no, yeah. we're, we're september. no no but i think it's but it, not going to have like millions of tourists yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to be That's fine good. I think we'll be okay. Yeah. yeah, that time is better than you know, like the time where there's a lot of tourists because it's small. Where you go to see those lizards, dragons, yeah. with all of, it can get really crowded. Um, yeah, sure, sure. sure yeah. I think it's really good. It's not a holiday. Yeah. The most spectacular thing in in uh, Flores is the, the three little lakes, each one in a different color. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and uh, but this is pretty that's far from Mono. Juan Bajo. That's in Mono. Yeah, next to next Moni, to Mono. Moni, 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 Moni. Yeah. yeah and then I, that... I think Java must have a lot of interesting things too, because it's a pretty big island. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, so oh, one of them, in fact, uh, is Mount Bromo. Mount Bromo. And is very this nice. is this. Uh, you can actually have a trip from Bali to Mount Bromo. It's kind of two days. You go oh, there, and oh. and, uh, and that's gorgeous because because it is actually closer to the part of Java which is near the ca the capital and so on. Oh. Java is a huge island. Yeah, and yeah. so yeah. and, yeah. and Bromo, Bromo is really worthwhile. Yeah, it's a Bromo it's a uh, it's a volcano. And it's kind of it doesn't have many much vegetation around it, and you can actually uh, view it from afar. And it's impressive, you and you can actually sunrise. climb up all the way to the to the it's to the lip of it. Yeah, magical. Uh, it's, it's very yeah, very nice. Thank you. That's You're welcome. Well, any other questions before we finish off the meeting? So I, before we finish, I just want to let you know that our next meeting, I'm just looking at the date, will be on October 24th. And Nancy Langton is going to talk to us about her travels in Namibia. Mm -hmm. And then in 
uh, November, Rich Stokes, who's on the, uh, the session today, is going to talk to us about India, and that will be on November the 14th. And those are the two meetings coming up before the Christmas break. Um, so we have speakers until after the holiday season in December, and I'm always looking for speakers. So if anybody's interested in talking in the new year, I think after January, um, please let me know and I will uh, try to slot you in. We don't have speakers all the way up until June when it will be our last uh, session of the year. So again, I wish to thank Uri and the company for uh, a wonderful talk, interesting part of the world. I wish I had uh, now that I had not canceled my trip <laughs> and not worried about the ability to bring some a little codeine attached to my Tylenol into the country without getting put into some prison or the other. <laughs> and, uh, anyhow, uh, thanks everybody for attending and we look forward to seeing many of you in the next session in uh, October. Bye-bye. A real treat. Thank you. Thank you.